guys, you're tuning in to Agent on Duty with myself, your host, Stacey Prayer, and today I'm joined with my special guest and colleague, Alicia McLean. Hey, Alicia, how's it going? Hey, Stacey, I'm great. Thanks so much for having me on. I'm super excited for today. Me too. Anytime I get a chance to talk to Alicia, I'm super excited. I wanted to get into it because you do have quite a cool story of how you got into real estate. Um, so I want to start off with a little bit about what you were doing before you got into real estate and then how you made that transition. I'm long time in the industry. Uh, I've got family in the business. So I grew up from a little kid, you know, being part of just a family business growing up, which was amazing and very inspiring. And of course, from that perspective, when I was a little younger, I didn't really want to follow in my mom's footsteps at that time. So I went into a corporate world and I had a wonderful career uh, in the corporate space. And then from there, I moved into some startup work, which was really cool, very different and gave me the opportunity to be able to explore different things, all hands on deck, be able to build businesses from the ground up and, and really get through that beginning piece of it. And funny enough, I was like, oh, well, you know what? I was newly separated at the time. So I thought, okay, how can I make sure that I'm protecting myself as I've, you know, just uh, come on board with this IT startup company. So at that time I went through and I got my real estate license and sure enough, ready, you can't make this stuff up. The, the week, the same week I got my real estate license, they laid off half the company. It was startup, it was restructure, right? Wow. So at that point, I'm a, I believe in synchronicity. I believe everything happens for a reason. And that's when I thought, you know, let's jump in two feet. None of this transition into full time. I jumped right into real estate and have loved it ever since. And you're fantastic at it. And I know a lot of your clients, like they give you rave reviews. So um, definitely seems like the right move for you. Um, so do you want to tell our listeners or viewers a little bit about um, the market that you serve in and how long exactly have you been serving in those areas? So I've been licensed since 2016 and uh, I'm in York region. So that's where I am just north of Toronto. When I first started in the business, I focused, of course, right in my own backyard, my own farm area, someplace that I knew that the, the area very comfortably. But what I realized is as we moved into 2017, the market started to get very hot and all of a sudden people weren't able to afford that Markham and York region area. So I really tapped into the Durham area and I started to move a lot of my clients from Markham and Toronto. And now I specialize in the Durham area. It's a great, it's a great area for families, great area for people trying to get into the, the real estate space and it became more affordable. You got a little bit more, your dollar stretched in, in uh, Durham. So that's kind of where I'm focused now. I still service Toronto, still service Markham, but my main focus is primarily in the Durham region. That's what we say about St. Thomas. If you go to St. Thomas, your dollar stretches just a little bit more. I think it's 25% more they were, they were tagging it as. Now I know 2016 when the market kind of like, that's when the wild west just kind of opened up. And I feel like that's when we started seeing, I, I always say it was like for London, it was like November, 2016, because everything just kind of like, just went whoosh. And everyone was like, what is going on? Because all of our listing inventory just started going like crazy. And then we were a brokerage at the time that had, um, I think it was like 26 listings. And within like that week, I think half of them had sold. And we were like, this doesn't normally happen. Like usually it takes like a month to three months. Did you find that there was a big migration going from your areas now to the, the like filter towns like London and Woodstock and Cambridge? Cause you were saying the Durham region, is that kind of what happened with you too or? Yeah, very similar actually. Uh, you articulated that perfectly. We saw the same thing and the timing was about the same. When we hit about November of 2016, it was kind of like, oh, and I'm new. Remember, I'm brand new at the time. And I had joined a team, so, which was great. So I'd gone through the individual agent and then moved into a team. And we saw the same thing. And all of a sudden it was, okay, well, now we're priced out of this area. And a massive a shift, not even just to the Durham region, but then where do we go even further? Because the expectation in price in a lot of the buyers was still... <laughs> It's still like 2015 price point expectation. So we saw the exact same thing happen over here. And then that's when Durham became really like, hey, let's look at this opportunity. And now what we've seen in, uh, from Durham is we've started to see that move even further east just because people were, were realizing we could commute in. And if we we're going to have home ownership, especially in this crazy hot market, 
Where are we going to get this opportunity? And then the fear started to kick in. What if we don't get something? What if we're priced out? And then there's the other people. But what if I've overpaid? <laughs> so it's always like a difference of, okay, this way, that way. And, and working with your clients at that point, it's really important just to educate them. But it was, it was really right on point with you guys. We saw that big boom. And then right into 2017, it was on fire. It was great. But it, as well as a little exhausting, you know? We are going to take a quick break and then I want to tap into that a little bit more because I know our viewers are probably curious to hear us talk about exactly what's going on with pricing. Uh, so guys, give us a few moments and we'll be right back. Hey guys, we're back from break and you're tuning into Agent on Duty with myself, Stacey Freer, and my special guest, Alicia McLean. So I, I got licensed in 2012. And when I first started, we were just kind of coming off the, the 20, 2008 um, uh, crash, I guess, or whatever you want to call it. Like crash didn't really crash in London. But um, anyways, there was houses that would stay on the market for like one to three months, six months if they were overpriced. And you could actually negotiate um, where you can negotiate like 20K, 15K off the price. And you can put in conditions. So you've never actually been in a real estate situation where you've had those conditions on home inspection, financing, insurance, like two pages of conditions with a claw back and then still waiting to see if it's firm. Like I remember the seven day like butterflies, which it used to be like now if there is a financing um, condition, it's like a day, three days maybe. But like before, back in the olden days, um, it was like, seven days, sometimes 14 business days. So not like real count of days. Um, but yeah, so we would sit there and we'd be like, okay, is it going to be firm? 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 And then we'd have to wait and sit there and wait. So now it's been a, it's been great for realty, realtors who know how to handle this kind of a market because you, when you're able to land a deal, it's like, boom, firm over asking price. Like, no, like you, I feel bad for our buyers because sometimes they only get 15 minutes to make this life purchasing decision. And then we're like, okay, so you're going to go in and you're going to go about 220K over asking, maybe more, depending on how many people are competing. Um, you don't get any conditions and um, you're going to put down a big deposit. How much cash do you have on hand? Because the bigger, the better. So it's like, it's so weird saying that to someone now, whereas before, like you would sit there and haggle back and forth, right? Mm -hmm. So basically it's just like, how prepared and committed are you to this? Do you find that you're going through that with your clients and how weird is it to have to explain that to someone? That's such a great point, Stacey. So what I noticed here was after 2017, when they started to shut it down, I don't know about where you are, but it was like a ghost town. It, it was like the, the taps were turned on full and then they turned them off overnight. And all of a sudden we're like, uh, there's, how do we do business? How do I do business? <laughs> like what's going on? And then in the summer of 2017, we saw a whole bunch of homes that didn't close because oh. they overpaid and then it didn't appraise. Oh. And, and as we moved through this, we were always hoping, will it get a little busier? Will it get a little bit more normal? I saw a little bit of normal on this side from 2018, 2019. We did put conditions. It was a little bit more normal, which was great. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, what was so important about adding those conditions and educating our, our buyers was we wanted the financing condition because we'd just seen all these homes that didn't close because they didn't appraise out. So this was one of the key things in educating our clients, which was really important. You need that, you know, five, seven day, we didn't get 14 day conditions, but five to seven day of a financing condition, we could team that up with a building inspection. It was quite nice. And it was really educating our clients at that particular time to say, it's important that the house appraises. And then fast forward 2020, all that's out the window now. So exactly. now it's very much educating your client Say we're still doing the same process. Remember, a lot of these clients that are buyers now were once buyers many years ago. So things have changed. And so it's really important yeah. to say, hey, I know you've bought and sold before, but let me take you through the process now because things are very different than the last time, even if the last time you bought was in 2019. So mm -hmm. it's so important about the educational perspective saying we're still going to do building inspection. We're still going to do your financing. 
but the mindset changes instead of taking doing it after the offer offer presentation conditions afterwards i said we're just going to flip it and we're going to do it before and i think that was the hardest part for a lot of our buyers to kind of grasp like but what do you mean and that's what I was like, but are you pre-approved? Well, no, I get pre-approved after I put the offer. I'm like, no, 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 it doesn't work like that anymore. So yeah. now it's really important to have those conversations with our clients from the very beginning to educate them and educating our buyers is really what sets us apart at least as, as well as a few others, but doing all that work up front. So let's make sure you're pre-approved. Let's make sure that we've got a building inspector to come back in. Like you said, 15 minutes, sometimes 30 if you're lucky to make the biggest financial decision. So mm -hmm. let's see and let's get out strategically early in the process so that we can go back if we needed to bring in a building inspector, do a pre-inspection. And I totally agree with that. And it's funny because I have like, God bless their souls. I. I have some buyers that I absolutely adore working with, but since House Sigma came out and like a few other apps came out, they're like, well, we just pulled up these and they just sold two months ago and they all sold. And then I did this percentage. And then, so I should actually only offer this. And I'm like, oh, well, that was two months ago. Let me educate you on what's going on now. <laughs> and I just laugh. I'm like, oh. I'm like, that is so precious. Thank you. Thank you for trying to assist me with my real estate job. But let me educate you on what's going on. That was two months ago. There was a hypothetical lull going on. And now we're back into full buyer season. So take that price at about 40 to 50K. And then maybe you're playing ball. No guarantees. <laughs> but well, we'll see. And I've been pretty good at guesstimating final sale prices within like one to 5K. Um, so it's been my own personal, like, I wish I, I could bet on this. Like if realtors wanted to have like a side hustle gambling game on like, how much is this going to sell for? I would be the first to sign up and like place bets. Um, guys, we are going to take another quick little break. And when we get back, we're going to talk all about coaching and NLP. What's NLP? Alicia's going to tell us. We'll be right back. Hey guys, we are back and you're tuning into Agent on Duty with myself, Stacey Prayer, your host, and my special guest, Alicia McLean, and colleague. I wanted to segue into this colleague stuff because you and I just actually both joined uh, Kathleen Black's coaching and consulting system as coaches. Um, and it's one of the things that honestly, after running a real estate brokerage, helping with systems ops, um, helping many people buy and sell homes, I felt like it was the next natural transition in my career. And I've been getting so much from it. So anyone who I do coach, if you're watching, hi, thank you so much for your time. <laughs> um, I've been, I've been personally growing from it and I think it's awesome. And I know that you and I share a similar experience where you went from real estate to now managing a team to now doing the coaching and NLP, which I think is really great. I haven't personally had a chance to get into that, but I want to discuss that a little bit more. So Without further ado, please tell me what made you get into coaching in an LP? When I was working corporately, I knew at that point, so I'm based out of Toronto and I lived on airplanes. I was actually based head office wise in Dallas. Ooh. So I was had two young babies and back and forth, back and forth. So I was like, I don't Is everything know. bigger in Texas? I gotta ask. <laughs> Including their hair. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> everything's bigger and everything's hotter it is hot down there but working corporately it made me realize like this is not what i wanted to get into and this this transition actually i got into nlp and life coaching when it was just started i was like what is this life coaching all about so in my corporate world i was a director of operations so i had a lot of great tools available to me to be able to work with people, how to hire people, how to speak to people, how to really connect, build that rapport. And that's when I kind of, I always believe everything for a reason, which is a little NLP right there. So as I've kind of was moving into this transitional period in my life, I discovered NLP. I'm like, there's a whole course on this. What is life coach? Oh my gosh, this is great. All right. I'm just going to jump in here. So for anyone who doesn't know what NLP is, it's actually neuro-linguistic programming. Um, so it's all on how to train your brain 
And now back to you. Great point, uh, Stacey. Thank you for that. So yeah, neuro-linguistic programming is all in your mindset. It's all about working with your subconscious as opposed to your conscious mind. Uh, a little bit crazy way to think of it, but that's a story for another day. <laughs> Long story short, I got out of corporate life and I decided I was going to become a life coach. So I went through and I got my, my first level of NLP uh, coaching certification. That changed my world. All of a sudden, I saw things differently. Now, remember too, I then was also transitioning into startup life and this whole different space. Well, this tied in perfectly as I've gone through my real estate career, I had a huge, huge internal drive to continue to help people and help support people and build you up. I found a lot of the world tries to like push you down and keep you down there. And I was like, I'm such a positive person just naturally. So this was the perfect opportunity to be able to say, how could I take my NLP background, my coaching background and impl implement it into my real estate business? Mm -hmm. When I got into teams, because I could realize I could coach and mentor my team with understanding the real estate pieces. And then I also come from a marketing background. So fair enough. So we can yeah. push all those together. And that's how I got into real estate coaching because I met Kathleen Black and it was the perfect the perfect fit, she is a consultant's approach, which was very different from other coaches. Everybody else was very salesy. And I'm like, that's not me. I want to be consultant. I want to be helpful. I want to teach you. I want to mentor you. So it was a very different approach. And I got to use all my NLP that way. Yeah, it's great. And it's great female energy. Whereas I find the salesy approach is more like a masculine energy. So I don't like not to be a feminist or anything. I just find that there's a little bit more nurturing with that consultant's approach and you've been killing it and you're doing workshops now too, and you're doing the community coaching. So what has this brought into you like personally? It's really tapped into my zone of genius. And, and we talk about that often within coaching, right? When things are not flowing so well and you're getting stuck, it's probably because you're trying to do things you don't love doing. Like, especially in real estate, there's many different aspects in real estate, but are you doing the parts that you love to do? Some people love making phone calls, then go do that. Some people love doing showings. Other people don't really like people so much. They want to work more behind the scenes. So what I found was being able to coach is what my, like, it just makes my heart sing. Like, and you know that Stacy, uh, yeah. you can just see it's like instant energy. It's, this is my zone of genius. I could do this all day, all night, and it's effortless. Yeah. It's a lot of energy, but it, it feeds my soul and as does real estate. But I found this way, I was able to connect with more realtors, be able to share the experience and it becomes a win-win. I truly get excited when I watch my clients start to see how it's all working, how it, they see results. Like that's the biggest part of it. It's like, stay the course. I find a lot of people are this way, that way, this way, that way. But when yeah. you have a clear plan and you're able to keep them accountable to that plan, Oh, the zone is genius. It's fabulous. Everyone should work in it. It's like, it's the best spot. It's like your own little magic carpet ride. You're just there. And it's everything that, that resonates with you. So one of the things that I wanted to talk to you about too, because you are, I like, honestly, I think even on your worst day, you'd still put a smile on someone's face, right? You yeah. just vibe at a different level. So what do you do when your clients are, I know with uh, COVID and being in lockdown, everybody is really feeling this like cabin fever and overwhelm. Um, it doesn't matter if they have a plan. It just seems like the rug keeps getting taken from under their feet because they build momentum and then there's another lockdown. So what are some coaching techniques or what are some things that you've been kind of telling people to help uncork that? And like there, I've noticed that there's people that are in lockdown that either have a glow up or they're just like a wilting flower. So what are some things within your personal life and your coaching life that you're sharing with these people to help them get out of that mindset? It comes down truthfully to mindset. Mm -hmm. Either way, no matter which way you look at it, it's right. It's either a positive outcome or a negative outcome and either one can be right for you. So it doesn't really matter. It's all about how do you see it? Uh, and it's true, Stacey, on my worst days, you'd never know. It's probably people's best days on my worst day, but it's all about how I look at the world. Anything that comes to me, is always spun into a positive way. The glass in my world is truly half full or a filling over in every possible way. So when I'm working mm -hmm. with my 
coaching clients, I really want to understand where their mindset is. What is constantly pulling you down, you know? And when I really look at like deep level stuff, it comes very clearly. It's either abundance or scarcity. Which space are you living in? And I live in the mindset of abundance. So if I want more money, you got to be more careful. You might get a hundred pennies, but that's abundance. That's an abundance of pennies, right? It didn't make you rich. You got to be specific. But if yeah. you're thinking always negative for me, this always happens to me, then you're going to live in that space. So yeah. you have the power to direct whichever way you want. And I'm always going to direct all of my clients to the more positive way of thinking. You can do it, boost them up, power them up, right? Oh, I know. And like, isn't it the best feeling when you wake up and you get an email from a client that's like, I just made like four sales or I just did this or I just like, like doubled my goal. I never thought I could do this. Like, honestly, for you guys who don't know Alicia and I, we literally probably do happy dance. Like <laughs> I get these emails. I'm like, ah! I, I am that like typical, like eighties person that's like, <laughs> like I get so excited for everybody. Okay, we're going to take a quick break. And then when we come back, we're going to get into a little bit more about what else you have going on and anything else you'd like to promote. So stay tuned, guys. Uh, it'll be just a minute. We are back. You're joining us and watching Agent on Duty with myself, your host, Stacey Freer, and my guest today, Alicia McLean. Alicia, thank you so much for coming on the show today and sharing a little bit about your business, a little bit about your life, and a little bit about mindset. Is there anything else that you have coming up that you're excited about that you want to share or anything that you want to leave um, on a positive note to people? Someone who's out there that's maybe a realtor that's struggling or maybe someone who's an entrepreneur that's struggling, what advice would you have to give them? Stacey, in all the years that I've worked with people, my biggest advice is ask for help, leverage. I think that too many of us walk in and expecting to know anything and everything about the new industry we've just come into, entrepreneur or real estate. Coming into real estate, it's okay. You're not supposed to know everything. Uh, get with a really great team. Learn from the, the ground up. Uh, what do they say? Uh, learn from the best, forget the rest. And it's true. The other piece that I would say, regardless, real estate, entrepreneurship, get a coach. Uh, it's the, one of the best investments you will ever make. They are there to help navigate you through the process, help you to break down the roadblocks, get your vision, and really hold you accountable to build your business leverage and asking for help. Don't be scared of that. Jump right in, get as much help as you can and take advantage of it. That's probably my biggest advice to anybody in any kind of role. And one of the things that I love about coaching too, is we're there to help guide you, not do the work for you. And we actually had this conversation and I made this sports analogy, which is a, kind of funny because I don't really watch a lot of sports, but only nights game. Um, but, um, I was just like, you know, it's funny, like if you saw a, an all-star quarterback, um, basically taking notes from his coach and then not doing the drills, right. And telling the coach to do the drills, that's not going to make the quarterback better. Right. Uh, Alicia, where can they reach you if, if they're interested in learning more? The best place to reach me, uh, from a coaching perspective would be Alicia at Kathleen speaks.com. And if you're looking from a real estate perspective, you can reach me at Alicia at realtors collective.com. Amazing. Well, thank you again so much, Alicia, for being a guest on our show. Um, it's always great spending time with you. And I just wanted to say thank you to the viewers for watching as always. We'll see you next time.